Hi and welcome! So in this video we are introducing the concepts of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So our basic setup here is that we want to look at a special case of square matrices, so matrices that have dimensions n by n, where we have a times x equals lambda times x. So we've been looking at ax equals b, and now we're going to look at this special case where the ax is equal to lambda times x, where lambda is a real valued scalar. So it's a real number and it's a scalar. Lambda is just another Greek letter that we use, and it's the one most commonly used for this subject of eigenvalues and eigenvectors, so you can expect to see lambda anytime we're talking about this topic. So what does this mean if we have ax equals lambda x? So what this means is that for at least some vectors x, the matrix A simply scales x by lambda. So A can be seen as a transformation. It's a matrix. It's transforming a vector and sending it to a new vector. And in these specific cases, what A is doing to a vector x is that it's just scaling it by a scalar lambda. So let me show you what this looks like with some vectors and graphing them. So let's suppose we're thinking of the matrix A as a transformation. So we're taking the transformation T of a vector X and it's giving us A times X. And let's just start with a vector X, let's say negative one, one. So one example of this case might be that we do T of X and we're getting lambda times X. So we're A times X is lambda times X and we're doing lambda equals two. So this scalar would scale by two and that's what the matrix would do to the vector. Alternatively, maybe lambda is negative one. So now the vector simply switches directions. So our new vector is one negative one when lambda equals negative one. Or we could have even lambda equals negative three and now we're scaling the vector by three and it's switching directions. So lambda is just some scalar and we're scaling the vector in this specific case we're considering here. So let's go on to the formal definition. We say that given an n by n matrix A, the vector V is an eigenvector if it has this property that A times V is equal to lambda times V for some scalar lambda that we call an eigenvalue. So we have this eigenvector, the vector V, it's a special vector that has this property that when we apply A to it, so we do A times V, we get lambda times V. And that specific value lambda we call the eigenvalue. So we think of these in pairs, an eigenvector will have a corresponding eigenvalue, and there can be more than one eigenvector, there could be more than one eigenvalue, but we think about them corresponding to each other. So just some notes before we say a little more about this. In general, lambda could be a real value or an imaginary value, like a complex number. But for now, we're just going to focus on the cases where lambda is a real value. Looking at complex values for lambda, so having complex eigenvalues is just another step up and we need to focus just on the real valued ones first. Also, we're going to specify that we want non-zero eigenvectors. So we're gonna think about non-zero vectors V. So the reason we do this is that if V was just zero, so all of the components were zero, any matrix applied to it is just gonna result in zero. You can think that anything times zero is just zero. And so it's always gonna have this property that A times V equals lambda times V. So it's really just not interesting and we just don't wanna consider those cases. That would be like the trivial case where the vector is just the zero vector. And so we're specifying that we want non-zero vectors. All right, so to wrap up this video, I'm just gonna give us an example that uses some of this language. So let's confirm that the vectors two, one and negative one, one are eigenvectors of the matrix A, where A is equal to four, two in the first row and one, three in the second row. And then let's find the corresponding eigenvalues for each of these eigenvectors. So, okay. Remember, we are looking for the case where we have a times our vector is equal to lambda times our vector. And I've now given you the eigenvectors and the matrix A, so we are just going to try to confirm that it has this property and then find the lambda that it works for. So I'm going to compute A times V for each of these vectors and see what happens. 
So we do our matrix A, and then we're going to multiply it by 2, 1, or negative 1, 1. So let's do 2, 1 first. So when I do this multiplication, I'm doing 4 times 2 plus 2 times 1. That's the first row. And then 1 times 2 plus 3 times 1. That's the second row. Then I'll simplify. So I'm getting 8 plus 2 and 2 plus 3, which is 10 and 5. Okay, so that is my resulting vector from the first a times v. Let's do the second eigenvector now. So I'm getting 4 times negative 1 plus 2 times 1. That's the first row. And then 1 times negative 1 plus 3 times 1. That's the second row. And now I simplify. I'm getting negative 4 plus 2 and negative 1 plus 3, which is negative 2 and 2. So, okay, we have our resulting vectors. So we've done a times v, and now we want to see, is this equal to a scalar times our vector that we started with? So we're looking, is the vector, so let's say 10, 5, is it equal to lambda times our original vector, 2, 1, for some lambda? Then for the second eigenvector, is negative 2, 2 equal to lambda times the original vector, negative 1, 1? So we can write out some formal steps in order to find this, but since we know that these are eigenvectors, we should be able to pretty clearly see what the scalar needs to be. So in this first case, I'm seeing that if we multiply it by five, so if lambda is equal to five, I'm getting 10 and five, which is what we wanted. Then for the second eigenvector, I'm seeing that if lambda is equal to two, I'm multiplying the vector by two, and I'm getting negative two, two, like I wanted. So these are eigenvalues that correspond to each eigenvector. So lambda equals 5 and lambda equals 2. We'll learn in later videos how to find these eigenvalues without starting with the eigenvectors. So we'll learn how to do all of this from scratch. But for now, we're just getting used to the ideas. So I want to close by just showing what this looks like graphically. So if we start with our eigenvectors on these graphs, so I'm plotting the eigenvector 2, 1, and the eigenvector negative 1, 1. So then if we think about what A as a transformation does to these vectors, so what A does to the first eigenvector is that it scales it by 5 and it becomes 10, 5. So this corresponds to the eigenvalue of 5 since we're taking that vector and just scaling it by 5. So then for our second eigenvector, where we have negative 1, 1, what the matrix A does to that specific vector is that it's scaling it by 2. So it's an eigenvalue of 2, and we're getting our resulting vector negative 2, 2. So A, when applied to other vectors that aren't these special vectors, probably does something else. It's probably not just scaling it. But the eigenvectors are these special vectors where all A does to them is scale them. All right, and there we go. So that's a first example of looking at eigenvectors and eigenvalues. In future videos, we'll start talking about how to find eigenvalues and then find eigenvectors, but that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.